right, who had a question about the quiz? Let's start with that. Something you didn't get right on the quiz, because I promise you people, these are going to be on your test next Tuesday. money am I making right now? A dollar for each sold. I'm selling them for a dollar each. And how many am I selling? A hundred. So that's how much money I'm making right now, right? Now how is that going to change? That is going to change because what am I going to do? I'm going to take 10 cent increments away from the price and what's that going to do? Increase in 20 increments the number of, pay, or number of uh, papers I sell, right? So what do I need to figure out? How many times do I want to lower the price so that this number will come out to be as big as possible? So X will be the number of price decreases. So what is my new price going to be? If I decrease x times, what will this price be? 1, 1 minus 0.1x. That's $1.10. Now how many am I selling? 100. Plus 20. Plus 20. Now, if I were to foil this out, it would be a quadratic equation, right? What am I interested in knowing? The vertex, the maximum. So I want to find the vertex. So the vertex will be negative 10 over negative 4, which is 2.5, 2.5. Now what does that mean? Is 2.5 two is not the answer to anything. What is that telling me? I am going to change my price two and a half times. Every time I change my price, it's worth how many cents? Ten. Ten. So two and a half of those would be what? Twenty-five. So I'm going to lower my price twenty-five cents. So what's my new price? That's part B. B is the, what's the new price? Seventy-five cents. So the new price is 75 cents. Now, what's A is find my maximum revenue. Well, this is the x coordinate of the vertex, right? Now I need the y coordinate. So you can either plug it in here. Or it might be easier, since you've already got this as 75 cents, figure out what this is. Well, what's 20 times 2 and a half? 50. Yeah, that's 50. So I'm selling 150 sheets at 75 cents each. So my income will be 150 times 75, whatever that is. $112.50. Okay. 
anything else from the quiz that we need to talk about, Robert? Uh, number two. Find the zeros. Of this polynomial. <coughs> so did you find any of them, Robert? Uh, negative one. Negative one is a zero. So I'll divide it out. I presume you did this also? Yes. And you were left with x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4x minus 20. Yeah. And if you're <coughs> alert, that groups. You don't have to group it. You can guess another number. But it does group. So I have x minus 5 as my common factor. And then x squared plus 4. So one of the roots was negative 1. That's the one you guessed and divided out. What's another root? Uh, 5. This does not factor, kids. x squared plus 4 equals 0. x squared equals negative 4. And x equals plus or minus 2i. So there are your other two roots. So you can just have like negative 2 and 2. You'd have to have the 2i. Well, yeah. Negative 2 and 2 would be the answers if this were x squared minus 4, but it's not. Okay. Matthew? 4. of x plus 3 and x minus 2. But I also note that at 3, I'm bound, at negative 3, I'm bouncing off. So this should be a squared. And that would be good enough, except I threw that other point in there. So I have to figure out the coefficient that will make it so if I put in negative 1 for x, I get 3 for y. This number is going to control how high that curve goes so that it picks up the point negative 1, 3. So 3 equals a times, okay, that's 2, 4. Negative 3, that's negative 12, negative 1, 4. So this would be your equation with the negative 1, 4 right down. Okay. How, I mean, I don't know how you got negative one half. I should have. So you're lucky. Keep your point. You're lucky. It's your lucky day. It's not negative one half, it's negative one four. Anything else? Yeah, Katie. Which one? Seven. Find the remainder. Oh my gosh. Someone actually wrote on the paper, there isn't enough room to work this problem. Yes, there is not enough room to work the problem if you're going to divide it out, right? That's the point. Don't divide. Just, put it in. Just plug, it in. plug in the numbers. So this is a, think of this as a function. Think of the problem as a function. Oops, minus eight. And then, and then simply plug in the number you would have divided by. So in this problem, I would have divided by 1. I would have put 1 out in the box, Katie. But I'm not going to divide because there isn't enough room. So I'm going to plug in 1. And I'm going to get negative 9 as my remainder. Emma? Can you do number 6, please? In order to do number six, we have to remember 
the key varies inversely as Q, what that means. Audrey, you're good on all this? Um, in order to do this, you got to remember P varies inversely as Q, the setup for that. So, when somebody tell me the setup for P varies inversely as Q. P equals K over Q. So then I'll put in 4 equals K over 7, so K is... Just as a matter of review, what if it said P varies directly as Q? P equals KQ. P equals KQ. That would be if they vary directly. Anything else on the quiz? We will, if they vary indirectly, it would be how we said it? No, inversely and indirectly are the same thing. This is directly.
Okay, so we have an equation of the height me the height of the ball. Okay, when will it reach its highest elevation? Highest. What am I looking for? Vertex. So t equals negative b over 2a, which I'm sure reduces somehow. What was the question? When will the stone reach its highest elevation? Answer? 10 sevenths seconds. That's T. That's time. Now, when will the stone hit the ground? Here's your equation. When will the stone hit the ground? Make that zero. Make this zero. Come on, guys. This is the height, right? If it's on the ground, what's its height? Zero. zero. So now we're going to solve this equation any way you want. I would probably. Um, just use a quadratic formula. Why was I not necessarily pleased with this answer right here? Yeah, I want that one. So the answer to the question is 4.3 seconds. When is the ball on the ground? 4.3 seconds. start on the ground. It started, this is a picture. This one started 30 feet up. If they start on the ground, then you're good. But th this is still symmetric, but it's not symmetric if the origin is one end point. Yeah. All right. Who else? Anything else on the homework paper? what we have. Another review sheet. It's called number two, review two. This is due on Monday. Matthew? Uh, I just had a question. Okay. On last night's homework? Yeah. Just a little delayed reaction or yeah. what? Well, we're back to the original homework page now because Garth Taylor's awake. It, it's a stupid game. Which one? Uh, six. Find an upper bound. Well, there are zillions of possible answers. What do you want to have happen? You 
was to find something so when you divide it, when you divide it, all these come out positive. So pick a number. Nope, that's not gonna work, is it? So we got a negative. Seven. I don't know. That's gonna work, right? There you go. There's tons of them. Sarah? Even if you have a remainder, it's still positive for that basis. Oh yeah. So that does not yeah. play a role. We're not looking for a root. We're looking for a number that tells us there aren't any roots beyond that. Yeah. Okay. So lower bound is it just opposite each one, so positive, negative, positive, yep. negative. Does it matter if it's like negative, positive, negative? It's positive, negative, positive, negative. Yeah. Okay. Now, door Taylor? Good? So can we move on? Thank you. All right, so now we're going to review sheet two. We've got some time to get started on this one. Who has a question? Who sees something on here that's still bothering you? Robert? Um, quick question about number one. So when you're putting um, x equals 5i in like parentheses, is it, do you have to like do x minus, x minus 5 minus i? No, no, that's 5i, not 5 plus i, that's 5i. Uh, okay. So this factor would just be x minus 5i. And then x plus 5i? Well, because you can't have 5i without having negative 5i. And that factor would be x plus 5i. Okay. And then you still have x minus 3. So we don't dissolve that one because we're going Yeah, so we don't have to boil this all out. Oh, so you have to Yeah. <coughs> yeah, unless I tell you not to multiply it out, you have to multiply it out. Uh, yeah, Bailey? 12. 12. <clears throat> okay, using the cubic regression feature of your calculator. Okay, so we're going to write a cubic equation using our cubic regression feature on our calculator. What do I have to have to get that ball rolling? What? Calculators. Well, yeah, you gotta have a calculator. Absolutely. What kind of information do I have to have to get going? What? Plot. I gotta have something to plot, so I, what do I need? Points. points. I need points. Alright, are there points in the problem? What's the first point? Sentence one gives me a point. What is it? 2, 12. And then I have 3, 38. And then I have 4, 82. And 7, 382. Are you with me? Now, Victoria, I actually wouldn't have to plot this because what have I told you? Use the cubic regression. Before when I had you plot, could somebody remember back that long ago? Why did I have you plot? You had some points, you put them in, and then I made you plot them. Why? See it was to see whether it was a line or a parabola, right? so that you knew which regression to choose in your list. Now I'm just telling you, this is a cube. So if you want to graph it, you can, but you don't even have to mess with that. What do you have to do? You have to get these points into your calculator. And how do we get them in? Just uh, 
edit. You go into stat, edit. And somehow get rid of the old, you can type right over it. If you don't have much in there, you can clear list if you prefer to do that. Once you get it in there, it's all in now, set edit. I don't need to graph it, so I'm going to go right back into stat, over to calc, and choose what? Cubic regression. Okay, now, did you come up with A equals 1? What was your B? What, what is that? Zero. That's zero. You can interpret that as zero. So there's no x squared. There's a 7x minus 10. When you get 10 to a big negative power, that means zero. Remember, your calculator is a logarithmic machine. It's operating with logarithms. And so sometimes there's a little bit of round off error in there. So it's saying I'm close to zero. Well, it's really zero. And there it is. Now, did it ask me to do something else? How many points will he lose if he forgets five apostrophes? What do I do? Plug in five. So whatever you get when you plug in five, that's the answer. Plug five in for x. That'll be the answer. something on the paper that we need to take a look at. What about nine? What's your strategy for nine? Um, write the equation in vertex form. Okay, so we know Let's you think of a random equation. We know if we had an equation like this, where would the vertex be? Negative 2, 4. So we need a vertex to be at negative 2, 1. So is this kind of the foundation of the problem? Now, something's missing now, right? What's missing? This guy. Right? So luckily for me, what did they give me here? So I will put 6 in for y and 4 in for x. Number 6, C. 6, C. Alright, um, so what do we need to do here? What's going to be our strategy? Probably the group Yeah, because it, it doesn't group. Um, <coughs> let's think Descartes. You see any sign changes? So don't pick any positives, so let's think about negatives. Negative two. Oh yeah, good. So one of my answers, I'm supposed to be finding the answer, so one of them is negative two. What's left here? 
x squared plus x plus 7. What am I going to do with that? If I can factor it, I will. I don't think it factors. Yeah. So x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. So it looks like I'm going to get negative 1 plus or minus. Oh, geez. What is that? Square root of 27 negative. And 27 is 3 root 3. So negative 1 plus or minus 3i root 3 over 2. This is due Monday.